Good morning, everyone. Um, it's my great pleasure here today to talk to you about designing complex systems for the future. When we enter the 21st century, we find the new millennium will take us into the new world of complexity. Even though this brings up a lot of uh, challenges for engineering designers, I hope from my talk, I will illustrate to you some of the new opportunities this will bring to engineering design research. So let's first um, start by taking a look at what we mean by complex engineering system using some examples. While the general term complex system can refer to both nature or uh, man-made system, our interest here is more the later one, the man-made artificial, we call it engineered systems. So automobiles and uh, aircraft are very typical examples of complex engineer system with large number of physical components and the multidisciplinary design efforts. Uh, the highway is a example of complex infrastructure system that are featured by many intersections and interchanges. Uh, this very famous architect building in Dubai is another example of complex system. As an illustration of complexity, the energy use of one part of the building can have a significant impact on the other parts um, at the building as a whole through a very complex ca cascade of interactions. In contrast to this large complex system, I actually want to show you a emerging complex system that's built in the world of small things. So this is a nano diamond drug delivery system that's being developed by my colleague, Professor Ding Ho at Northwestern. And his work has been featured um, in Nature, Science, and many different magazines. This is a uh, patch um, that put on the human, in the infected area of the human body to, for the cancer treatment. This is a new concept that it's a structure with the uh, drug attached to the nano diamonds and embedded um, in this porous polymer, both at the bottom and the top, and then the drug can be diffused to the human body um, at the right release rate. Um, it's very critical to kill the cancer that this release rate cannot be too small or cannot be too large. So with the design method, we could actually design the size of the nano diamond and uh, the structure of this architect here to accomplish this goal. So the interactions here, both inside the patch with its intended environment is very complex, extremely complex. And this is just one of the many examples of very complex material systems built at the nano and the micro scale. However, once we can understand them, those kind of systems will have a significant impact to our life. So no matter the form of co this complex system, whether large or small, they all share some common features as highlighted in this doodle, uh, it's Woodle, it's called the Woodle diagram here. Um, there's some key words coming up. Uh, this actually is a roadmap defined by a society called the Complex System Society. Uh, based in Europe. Some keywords appearing here like dynamics, heterogeneity, scales, complexity, stochasticity, all imply the difficulty in predicting the behavior of a complex system. What I would like to recommend to you is actually this definition defined by a workshop called the Complex System Research sponsored by National Science Foundation in US back to 2008. There's three key features come out from that definition for the complex system. The first one is that all complex systems have very complex structure that are consists by many different components and the system, subsystems are highly coupled. This structure can be both hardware and software. The second one is a very key one, is that all complex systems have uh, possessed this emergent behavior that arise from the interactions of subsystem, and oftentimes they're not evident from subsystem analysis. This is really the difficult part. And the last one is that most of the complex systems have this feature called adaptation and evolution, means that they can adapt to inputs and evolve. Note that the definition here is for general complex system, so it could include biological system as well as engineer the system. So the adaptation and evolution, in fact, are the features of many biological systems. Um, nevertheless, this um, feature has been considered in engineering design as new metrics. I'm giving you example here, like the uh, uh, Louver uh, go to the Mars to explore the uh, complex, um, the uh, um, scientific uh, um, phenomenon and very complex terrain and the different environments. 
This is the iRobot system that can um, automatically uh, detect what are the floor types and also using sensor to see what, uh, where are the dirty area. Um, perhaps what we want is truly a transformer that able to change its form and the configuration to respond to different uh, functionality and the environments. So um, I have uh, showed you uh, many uh, complexities, uh, many some of the examples, and these examples certainly showed us that from the when we entered a new um, century, there's a transition from simplicity to complexity. So there's a couple challenges we're facing. I just name a few here. The first one is really the complexity and the cost of analyzing the system behavior that are coupled, emergent, and dynamic. The second one is the heterogeneity of the information that could come from various different sources like simulation and experiments at different level of abstraction and coming from different scale level even. The many different source of uncertainty, both internal and external, that we have to manage. Um, we also dealing with multi, not just multidisciplinary, but multi, op, multiple organization with conflicting goals. Finally, in order to design and produce products that are usable by the human, we have to understand the social technical interfaces. This is a difficult part because the integrating of the qualitative social element as well as the quantitative technical performance has been a constant challenge to us. So to further um, make my, uh, support my argument, I'd like to use this micro-grade design problem provided by Dr. Dratish Kyer from United Technology to show you that a typical energy system design actually is a very complex problem, it involves massive design space. Um, here, the design space is defined by many different choices in different domains like energy source, energy conversion, energy storage. Um, there are many variables that are discrete, continuous, involve strong coupling. A simple combination uh, of some design exploration can involve thousands of hours of simulation. The computational cost could be even become more demanding when uncertainty is considered, like this gyro um, design problem. Gyro system here is act as a sensor in the spacecraft. This is a project I've been working with my colleagues at Northwestern. Um, in this problem in designing a reliable system and that can work in very harsh environment, we actually have to consider numerous uncertain loads contributing to the failure, such as uh, the uh, magnetic uh, field, thermal cycling, radiation, and shock loading at lift. The gyro system is also a very good example to illustrate the complex system in a small word can introduce the difficulty in understanding the multi-scale phenomenon. In this particular system, there are at least 10 different materials that are bounded together through micro adhesive and the welding process. And they span uh, the, from the nano scale to the millimeter scale. Um, each scale, is very, they experience very different uh, deformation phenomenon there. And in order to model the whole system, we have to integrate multi-physics model together, and the interface and the coupling are very difficult to manage. And each scale also introduces its own source of uncertainty, such as at the macro scale level, you have uncertainty of geometry from manufacturing. In the lower scale level, you have this random, manufact um, random microstructure you have to consider, consider throughout the different phase of the material. Why the challenge are certainly very daunting, they also disclose many research opportunities to our community. Last year, the engineering design program at National Science Foundation sponsored two workshops related to this complex system topic. The first workshop in February is on the system design, engineering system design. The second one in September is on the multidisciplinary design optimization. When I look at the reports coming out from these two workshops, I actually generalized the, the, the five research themes. Um, the first one is called the matrix. Um, any design is a goal-driven activity. Uh, we have to define our objective, requirement, and the matrix. Related to the complexity, there's the question about how do we define like a reconfigurability, adaptability, as well as sustainability. In terms of those qualitative attributes like uh, elegance, how do we measure them? Those are the soft attributes. Fundamentally, what are the strategies we should use to design flexible and adaptive system as I showed you earlier? 
under uncertainty, also decision making, there's always the question about how do we quantify the uncertainty, how do we propagate them throughout the system, as well as what, how do we achieve optimum balance by a smartly allocate a resource in gathering information, on the other hand, reduct, reduced uncertainty in decision making. Under the theme of a coupling, it's a tough question about how do we really model or understand the, couple, the couplings of the subsystem so we can really predict the emerging behaviors and the better design the interface that, that can provide the failures. Under the theme of organization, um, the question is really broadened to not just product design, but also how do we design our organization so that it can adapt to change, and also how do we design our team with the desired attributes. Finally, the theme of people is becoming more and more important. Um, design is recognized as a collaborative human decision-making process, so it requires a deep understanding of the human, not only the users, but also the designers, uh, the interaction between the human and the computers, as well as the impact of a globalization and the cultural inferences. So in the next half of my talk, I'd like to actually go over some of the projects, ongoing projects that address these different challenges. These will cover some of the works done by the colleagues in this community, as well as some of the work done in my research group. So the further family design is a really, um, oh, first I'd like to point out that under each slide here, I actually use this uh, edge, the legend to show you the, some of the different concentration of this different topics area. The red is the strongest one and orange, and the gray means it's not addressed. So Prada family is really example of very complex engineering systems where achieving the commonality versus the variability that meet constant trade-offs. Um, when we enter the 21st century, Professor Tim Simpson at Penn State has showed us that the product family design has been involved into global platform-based product development. So for each company, it's a difficult question to answer is, can a global platform actually be developed for a worldwide market? If you have one, where do you make it and how do you enforce it? So um, they have been using many different methods to address the complexity issue, like the market segmentation grade method to kind of break down the users into different segments, the design matrix, uh, different kinds of indexes to measure the commonality and the variability, as well as multi-objective optimization to support decision making. As we enter 21st century, we also uh, have many new technologies become a available, so it's a question about how can we correctly infuse different technologies into the new product uh, development. So product, uh, Professor Olive Duweka at MIT has worked with Xerox um, to answer this question. Their research combined methods like system architecture DS, through DSM, change propagation, which can assess the uh, impact of a uh, a change to a subsystem, how it propagates to the whole system behavior, probabilistic analysis, as well as market estimation to help de determine whether a particular technology can bring benefits to the company or not. In designing complex systems, there's a growing interest of introducing sustainability as a new design metric. Professor Harrison Kim at UIUC has developed a life cycle based approach to show that the distinctive stage of product life cycles, such as pre life, usage life, and end of life, are actually integrated and affect with each other. To deal with the complexity of large amount of data, as well as large number of decision variables at each this different stage of life cycle, they're using methods such as data mining and the large scale optimization. Under the theme of uncertainty and the coupling, um, Professor Aaron Tuma and Chris Hall has been working on a DAPA project called the Verification of Correctness of Cyber Physical System. They're trying to develop a model-based method that actually can replace very expensive physics-based physical experiments to check whether the system can meet requirement. To sub support conceptual design, they're working on different suites of tools such as architecture synthesis, functional variation, all the way to performance variation, as well as uncertainty analysis. 
Under the theme of people, Professor Papa Numbers from University of Michigan has been working on addressing human-induced complexity, so using the developing a design system that allows the designer to discover what the user would prefer by offering different choices to the user. So here's an example to show you that designer can actually generate many different shapes of the vehicle and create new design based on the user, visual, user feedback about your visual preference. Under the theme of organization, the complex networks has emerged in many different contexts. Here I gave you some example of complex mobile device network, uh, organization network, and the social network. So emerging research areas actually use advanced modeling and simulation to understand the behavior of this network. Professor Campbell-Lewis at the University of Buffalo um, has showed that the convergence and the stability of a design process actually largely depend on the architecture of designer's network. So you can see here, there is a parallel architecture for designer, SS stands for subsystem, um, that can converge very stably. On the other hand, you could have a hybrid version of the same net designer network, but they can diverge in an unstable manner. So the approach they, can, they use actually can allow us to predict the convergence and stability of the designer's decision-making network, eventually to help us to really design and model and control um, different network systems. Beyond the designer's work, a uh, designer's network, my group and Northwestern are currently looking at understanding and modeling the social technical inference and also understanding the social network impact on the product ad adoption. So as illustrated in this figure here, um, the interaction between the individual consumer, a group of consumer, individual product, and the group of products are extremely complex. Um, so if we want to explore really the interaction between the consumer, the product, and the usage context, we have to integrate different principles from the engineering, marketing, as well as social science to develop analytical approach. I'm giving you an example of the problem we're working on alternative fuel vehicles. Forecast the future demand of um, this type of fuel vehicle, fuel vehicle, like the plug-in hybrid car, is interesting to many different parties, like the vehicle manufacturers, uh, the consumer, the energy generation um, maker, energy generator, generation company, as well as the policy maker. It's a very extremely complex problem because user's choice of a uh, car is not only depend on the technical, the performance, how good they are, but also on who they are, like their social demographic attributes, uh, their intended usage of this vehicle, um, as well as the inference from the people who have similar social status at them uh, and the social network, like neighbors and the friends. So we have developed a method that can integrate actually the uh, net social network simulation with uh, discrete choice modeling predicting the consumer's preference. You probably already recognize this is the California um, state in United uh, States. This is the largest state which consume or have the, the purchased the hybrid electric vehicle. Um, using the data, we're taking a data-driven approach. So using the data for 2009, NHTS stands for National Highway Transportation Data. We actually can indicate there's a 42,000 people here using conventional vehicles indicated by the, you know, the vehicle, the gray color. The red colors are the two, about 2,000 hybrid vehicle owners. So this is from 2002, 2009. Um, because the gray points really lots, the density is lot, they covered some of the red ones. So I'm bringing up all the red color. Those are the 2,000 data points. But what we are interested in here is using this information of the geographical location actually to create a social network system based on the, uh, the small world network assumption means that it's a large percentage of close link that you more intend to be influenced by your neighbor or the people close to you, uh, and then very small percentage of distance links. Through the agent-based simulation and integrating with an analytical model we call discrete choice model, which is a function of product attributes, like what, who is the maker of the car, what is the fuel assumption, as are the human attributes, demographic attributes, like the education level, where do you live, uh, 
usage context attributes like how many miles you drove every day and where you drive the car, highway or local. And the finally, the social impact simulation that we have, I have mentioned early, we are able to find the coefficients of those different terms to identify the importance. So here it shows that there's a large interaction between the HEV, stands for the hybrid vehicle, with the social impact. So this means that um, the people are positively influenced by the friends who have HEV cars. And the high interaction between the HEV and the high education level also tells us that people with high education tend to prefer HEV. And by some calibration, we can actually show that from the coefficient of the HEV car, we can show that the attitude of HEV changed from the negative coefficient in 2002 to the positive coefficient in the 2009. These are just very elementary results. I just want to give you a flavor of the type of work in this area. But coming back to the small word problem I mentioned early, for designing such kind of complex system, we're working in an area called the multi-scale design. This is also um, critical for the so-called concurrent material and the structure design. I give you a very simple example to demonstrate why this is an important problem. This piece of ice, pure ice, if you drop on the ground, it will definitely break. But if you add some newspaper in it, it's not going to break anymore. So what's happening here? What's happening here is you're adding a new phase of a material at a smaller scale level, but it can totally change the bulk property in terms of the material performance at the end. So such kind of principle actually can use to design much larger uh, complex systems that uh, uh, are critical for designing high performance structure like blast protection, a lightweight vehicle design. And we're designing a, we're developing a multi-scale, we call the stochastic multi-scale computational framework. On the top, the two domain here, one is the product domain, one is the material domain. And design variable come into both domains. And uh, uncertainty, of course, coming to both domains. And what's special thing is that in the material area, you have to really consider the randomness and inherent heterogeneity reality of the material microstructure. What serves as the critical link between the two is the constituted relationship using very advanced uncertainty propagation technique. We could actually identify this relationship and feed it to the product design model. In this case, we don't have to do the very expensive simulations at the lower scale level. And we also consider the uh, uncertainty introduced from the experimental area to do the model uncertainty quantification. Eventually, we're using the principle for design and the uncertainty to develop optimum design for both the material and the product. Here's an example to show you how this method is applied. Uh, we are working good year. There's about four or five faculty involved in this project. While my colleagues in mechanics are very busy working on in developing those models to capture the coupling between the different materials, I have been working on integrate those models together using methods such as statistical characterization reconstruction for the material description, um, high dimensional uncertainty quantification to define the stochastic constitutive relationship, uh, sensitivity analysis to identify what are the key design driver because it's a really complex problem, as well as multi-level optimization. While the analysis is bottom up from structure, property to performance, design is top down, really from the requirement of performance to property and then to structure. So as a closure, I hope you agree with me that really complexity is the way the world is. And um, um, as we are going into the 21st century, engineering system definitely will become more complex with more stringent requirement. Um, on the positive side, I'd like to quote what said in the book of my colleague Don Norman, Living with Complexity. Complexity is good, but it's not necessarily complicated. Uh, Don is coming from a um, industrial designer's perspective. He's saying that you could have a complex system, but we have to design them so that it can be easily used uh, by, the, by the user. Contrast to the first speaker, um, I'm arguing that the system thinking as well as the rigorous design methodology are the keys to, the, to develop um, this kind of successful complex systems. Um, thank you for staying here for the last day for this talk. And uh, I'd like to end this talk by giving you a picture of uh, Northwestern, where I'm coming from, because a lot of you ask me, where is Northwestern? We're in a town of Evanston, and we consider ourselves 
people from Chicago because we're only 18 miles uh, from Chicago. This is close to the suburb uh, to the Chicago city. This is the picture of our campus there. And uh, next year uh, will be the ASME IDTC International Design Conference will be at Chicago. So I welcome you to attend the conference and I welcome you to visit us at Northwestern. Thank you very much.